Mothers and their children frantically scrambled down fire escapes to survive the inferno that consumed their Bronx homes. They dashed out into the frigid night in whatever they were wearing, without jackets, without shoes, just holding on to their lives. They were the lucky ones. A raging fire quickly swept through the five story building on Prospect Avenue at the 187th Street, taking with it 12 lives, including a one year old child. SIX of the deadliest fires in New York City history. The toddler's final moments were spent in a bathtub, held by its mother, as they perished, sources told the Daily News. Heartbreak was etched of the faces of firefighters and medics who tried in vain to save the victims. Five people perished inside the 25 apartment building, and seven died at two hospitals, authorities said. Three of the other victims were children. Four others were in critical condition at St. Barnabas Hospital and Jacoby Medical Center, officials said. Twelve other people were rescued from the building, Mayor de Blasio said. Among the missing is a U.S. Army soldier. Quabina Mensa, 62, said his 28-year-old son, Emmanuel, was home for the holidays. Mensa said his son's roommate last saw him when the fire broke out on the third floor. He was telling the roommate to not come out of the apartment because there was smoke. But when they rescued everyone from the windows, we couldn't find him. I went to four hospitals. I can't find him, Mensa told the news. At St. Barnabas Hospital, Brian Whitaker, 36, was lending his support to an injured friend's relatives. It's such a tragedy because they lost so many family members, Whitaker explained. The rest of the family is upstairs in the back. They keep passing out and crying. The father is burned up real bad. Whitaker's friend was badly burned and is in a coma at Jacoby Medical Center. The man's daughter and three nieces were killed, Whitaker explained. They were on the fifth floor, so they weren't able to make it. Who knows how intense the heat was? I saw it on the news and got a call from a bunch of friends. We came over here around midnight and been here since. Witnesses recalled terror in the bone-chilling night. Thiram Diallo fled the building in a panic, awoken by a neighbor. Someone knocked on my door yelling, fire, fire, fire. I left my cell phone. I took only my wallet because I need to save myself. Diallo shivered in his sandals and gym shorts. I don't know how I got out. By the exit there was glass coming down in the flames. I didn't have socks or shoes. Nothing. Luke Hernandez, a fourth-floor resident, said she came home about 15 minutes after the fire started and saw black smoke everywhere. The shaken 37-year-old told the news she rushed into her apartment, grabbed her 11- and 7-year-old boys, and scrambled down the fire escape. Meanwhile, someone who lives across the street from the blaze said he saw children rushing down metal grate fire escapes. All they had was shorts and shirts, Rafael Gonzalez said. No socks. No nothing. I know they were cold. They were screaming for help. Gonzalez, 19, said it seemed like the firefighters were so busy battling the blaze they couldn't help the kids right away. Another resident, Esther Saki, 49, was making a phone call in her fourth floor bedroom around 7 p.m. when she first noticed something was amiss. I was so cold, so I went to the living room to see if the heater was working and smelled smoke, Saki told the Daily News on an MTA bus headed for a hotel in Brooklyn, where evacuees will be temporarily housed. I rushed to open the door 
and the smoke just hit me and pushed me back, so I closed it and went to the fire escape. She fled into the frigid night before putting on her clothes. I was naked, she said. I didn't have time to put clothes on. I didn't know what was going to happen. The smell from the thick smoke lingered long after the flames were gone as Mayor de Blasio visited the fire scene. This is the worst fire tragedy we have seen in the city in at least a quarter of a century, de Blasio said standing on a street filled with black ice. We're shocked by this loss, Fire Commissioner Daniel Negro said, calling the tragedy historic. The men spoke just blocks away from a 1990 arson at the Happy Land Social Club that claimed the lives of 87 people. More than 160 firefighters responded to the five-alarm blaze near the Bronx Zoo. The inferno broke out at 6.51 p.m. on the first floor and quickly spread upward. Firefighters responded in three minutes after receiving more than a dozen 911 calls. The investigation remains active and ongoing. The cause of the fire is to be determined by FDNY fire marshals. Sources said the blaze may have been sparked by a space heater, but de Blasio said it was too early in the investigation to tell. A database in the New York City Housing Preservation and Development revealed one of the apartments on the first floor, where the fire started, had open violations for bad carbon monoxide and smoke detectors. Attempts to reach the building owners were unsuccessful. Milka Garcia, who lives on the fifth floor of the building, said she came home to find her children had been evacuated. Garcia, 40, said her three kids, one girl and two boys, saw tons of smoke and had to get out through an emergency door. She said her 10-year-old daughter went to school with one of the victims, who's about eight years old, at public school 205. This is horrible, Garcia said of the fire. It makes me sad because they were my neighbors and friends of my daughters. City Councilman Richie Torres said he cried when he learned the child was among the dead in the disaster inside his district. It's dramatic and tragic, he said. The only silver lining is the heroism of the FDNY. We're all struggling with unanswered questions and broken hearts, said Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. She said her 10-year-old daughter went to school with one of the victims, who's about 8 years old, at public school 205.